Listen, do me a favor, hug at least two or three people or converse with them and tell them you're getting a miracle before the month is out. Mean it when you tell them, speak it. Just look at somebody and tell them, thank God I'm still alive. If you got enough voice left, I don't scream across the sanctuary and say, I'm still alive. I'm still alive. Thank God I'm still alive. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. You ought to be clapping right there saying hallelujah. You that are watching by social media, clap your hands with us and shout glory to God. Let the Lord have it. Let him have it. We're in the overflow. You may be seated. You don't want it. I thought you wanted it. I thought y'all wanted it. Let me let me let me not interrupt what I think is going on. Some of you are acting like your door's already open today. I, see, I knew it. No, for real. I felt that some of you came because the miracle has already began. And for you that don't have it, just hook on to someone that's getting it. And I'm going to give you two minutes to dance right where you are. And don't hold back. You've got two minutes. Let's get it. And if you ain't got it in your feet, put it right here. Come on, church. You that are watching by our digital platform, come on. If you're in a good place, turn your house into a sanctuary. I feel miracles. Listen, you that want to sit, Ken, but the rest of you listen to me. A scripture 
just dropped in my spirit. I'm a Bible man. Over in the book of Judges, don't turn to it, in chapter 21, God tells the men of Benjamin who are all left-handed, skilled, never lost a battle. He says, tonight, I'm going to give you wives. And they was like, well, they said they were going to hold our wives from us, he said, but God said, I'm going to tell you how you know they are your wife. I'm going to see who catch it. He said, all the men of war get there first and hide behind the bushes. Hide behind the bushes, don't let the women know that you're there. He said, and the women that come out and dance jump out of the bush and marry them. But the ones that act bougie, let them look like mannequins dressed up going nowhere. I'm going to make the statement again. That's Judges chapter 21 for all the pretty pies who want to know where it's at. Because some of you are going to get blessed by how you look and most of us by who we look up to. And I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills. Talk to me from which cometh my, where your help come from. All right, I got my millennials back. I think I want to preach to them. But let me say this. Your dance is going to make whatever you need jump out at you. It could be a job, it could be healing, it could be an apartment, a condo, a house. Whatever it is, the Lord said, if you dance for it, it'll come out of hiding. You've got 60 more seconds to do your dance and make that thing. y'all think I'm playing, huh? All of this is prophetic. got some troublemakers for 
if y'all gonna do it, do it. Don't play with it. If you turn up, you won't get turned down. This is the night to turn up. And you won't get turned down. Hold that music, don't play no more. Y'all gonna get fired. Don't play no more, lead player. We gotta see if it's real, if it's authentic. Thank you, Jesus. You may be seated. Let me. Attempt to give honor where it's due before I go too far and can't come back. I hear some folks talking about that's enough. It's never enough worship. When we get to heaven, ain't gonna be no preaching. It's gonna be worship day and night. In immortal bodies that won't get tired. Testifying how I got over. My soul looks back and wonders. I want to ask 30 of you a question, even the young and those who are older and seasoned veterans versus senior citizens. And I'm going to give 20 of you a chance to break out 10 seconds and sit down like you didn't even act crazy. But how would any of you praise God if you know you definitely going to make it to heaven? I'm talking about death. Right there, right there. I'm talking about definitely. Forget the cars, forget the marriages, forget the millions. I made it. What a day of rejoicing!
You ain't got to have no pretty dance to get to heaven. When the music stops, do you have anything left? Is there another way to love on God? It's called the fruit of our lips. Where the feet stop, the mouth continues. To God be the glory. For the things that he's already done. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God. Mighty God. A mighty God. A mighty God. A mighty God. This is the sound of revival. The sound of Pentecost. The sound of victory. The sound of restoration. The sound of recovery and replenishing. You may be seated. I'm not stopping that. I'm not going to hell for this one. Nope. You got to know when to tap out. And do what great grandma said. Let Jesus have his way. You that are watching, you may not be able to feel it all. But if you're in that posture, miracles are happening. As the old cliche says, which is a good time to use it, while we're trying to figure it out, the Lord has already worked it out. Today I spent a few hours with our presiding bishop. Don't clap till I'm done. And every minute that I spend with him, he's touchable, but he's always talking about furthering the kingdom. Your feet made your mouth tired. He sits down and he talks about how everyone can do better, should do better. Can't share with y'all everything we say, but you could talk to me that I'm already snitching a little bit. In the midst of talking about having to navigate and reform and intensify the kingdom, through the vehicle of one of the most powerful ministries and movements and churches in the world, which is the Grand Old Church of God in Christ, he continues to insert, not at the expense of my church not being blessed. You all are priority. I don't hear no, and you should understand this. 
The only reason why the revival, the, the encounter, the experience, whatever you want to call it, has been extended beyond friendships is because he asked God, let that fire burn in my church. He's concerned about our soul. And then last but not least, because you don't sound excited, you're catching your breath. He cares about the next generation. I don't hear nobody. I'll say it again. He is extremely concerned. Well, you should know that because what you are, he was when he was running the AIM conventions. Giving life to the youth, which was us, which are now a little older. This man is seeing 10 to 20 years down the road. And when I say his name, I don't want pity pats because he's not just your pastor. He's not just the bishop. He is now the eyes of the whole church of God in Christ. Everyone else should be hands, feet, ears. But some people, you know, it's a freak that has two heads. We only have one. And his name is the Honorable Presiding Bishop, Bishop J. Drew Shear. Sustain it, sustain it, sustain it. Don't sit. Let's lend that over to his lovely wife, partner. Dr. Cameron, tonight, to Dr. Dorinda Clark Cole as well. And proper protocol from there has been established. Be seated. Who is... Keep the camera on me because I think I'm going to be prophesying back and forth if I do from those watching to those sitting. Some people heard me prophesy about them and they came tonight, but the prophecy was on Sunday. We don't put prophecies on layaway. Some people, one day you need to bring me back just for one night of explaining how it works. We, we will function in it, but we need to explain it because a lot of people get confused that after excitement, they're not ready for the attack. All right, I'm going to leave that alone. Satan never attacks you if your name don't come out of God's mouth. It's not always because you're rich. It's because God keeps bringing your name up. Who's Martha per Pearson? Person. All right, that's why I set the camera. Uh, one of y'all who are her girlfriend's texter, make sure she watching. Miss P E A R S O N Person. Parson. I, I, Pearson. I don't know. I'm, that's why I'm spelling it. When I go to Africa, I'll be like O B I N G O W L because it'd be Obinawi. I don't. I don't have time. God is about to touch every bone in your body. Especially from your uh, right side back down. Ms. Martha is not by might nor by power, but by God's spirit that you shall be restored. And that restoration starts right now while I'm talking to you. 
Be thou healed in Jesus' name. And somebody with a loud mouth and quick clapping hands, use it to the glory of God. There's a lot of praise on this side of the church. I'm going to preach it soon. Someone on this side of the church is going to be supernaturally wealthy within two years. That may seem long to millennials, but it's short to us. When you invest in certain things or buy a house, that's a 30-year mortgage. So you say it's your house, but it's actually not your house till you pay it off. And sometimes God will bless some of us to pay it off in half the time. But somebody over here is going to be worth millions. Hear me. When I say something, if you run, open the door over there. If you run through the door and come back through that door, this means it has to be somebody young because ain't nobody older. Now, I would because I'm still a little agile. I got pain in the knee, but I'm still young. I'd run up. You got to run up one door, and that's you exiting one thing. Come around to the end of the lobby and come through the other door. I don't know your name, but the Lord said the way you're going to know is you is unique. You're born August the 4th. That's. Oh. When we praise God for other people. You may be seated. I'm going to do this one in a different way because I've got to move quick. Whoever has the last name I'm about to say out of my mouth, whatever your major problem is or stopping you from anything will cease at 12 midnight. 12 midnight, you will be thrusted from the struggle and be put on the path to success. No demonic activity. Now I hear people again. I don't think that could ever happen. As long as we live, we're going to have demons and problems. Okay, you can have mine. But let me say this. For people who preach but don't read enough. For ten folk who would jump on this, you would get it. He did tell Moses and them, the Egyptians you see today. Oh yeah, you will never see them again. So I don't believe you'll always have bills, always be sick. Oh, I, I don't believe in the always. So on this name, if three or four of you have the same last name, because I don't have time to go further, you will start praising God. We'll praise your last name will have to be green. Uh oh. Are y'all jealous or are you? The last one has to be. If we would have been stingy, I would have only said Carlise. Um, what's her name? Maya, while you were jumping and screaming, the Lord says, pick between three houses, not one. The Lord says eviction will never be in your life another day after today. And someone with a loud mouth ought to just give God that glory and honor. (laughs) 
Be seated. So being that we're calling out what seems to be, God's making it easy for me, colors, because green is a color. Even though it's not spelled the same way, if this person's here, they should run. If they're online, they ought to get happy because it's a color, but it's spelled different. The Lord said, I'm going to give you whatever you want if you praise me loud and your last name is Gray. Uh-oh, she done ran. May I ask you, may I ask, touch her, may I ask you how do you spell your last name? So it's not G-R-E-Y. So like I said, it's not the way we spell the color, but it's G-R-A-Y. Um, and you went just running by yourself. I keep seeing the letter J over your head. Stand up while we're talking. How old are you? 32, okay, I know why you sat down, you, because you're part of that culture. I got you. Because in my culture, if God was speaking, we'd have stayed up and got everything. You'd have said my name and said, you're going to get a house. I'd have stood up, praised him, stood there to see if he was going to pay it off. I'd have stood right there. When you can barely pay your rent, don't you sit down. Julia. Julia, that's your name. I want to say something to you. I'm going to have you run again. And you're going to tell God I need a place that I can't afford, but I can't be late on rent or anything else ever. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Ho, 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 ho. Are you from Detroit? I don't know why, but somebody wants to bless you in Alabama. I don't know where you're actually from. You from Alabama. Okay, listen to me. You ain't going back. Because God's going to bless you with a house here. And someone that will go crazy for God. Do it now for Miss Julia. Yeah. See, when one rejoice. We all rejoice. Young lady with the fan, come here. Because you screaming, yeah, come on. Don't worry, you ain't in trouble. I don't tell people's business. What's your first name? Yeah, because when you were screaming and waving the fan for her, how old are you? Wow, you're too young to be owning the house, but I guess. And the house is in the name Paget. It's like... Like P-A-D-G-E-T-T, -T, something like that, right? Once again, we're blessing millennials. If they didn't come back. Now, I got to say something to her while, she, while she's running away from me. Then you're going to really run because you're going to be confused. Your name is your prophecy, destiny. Except it's spelled with two E's, but destiny. Everything after today will be about destiny. Because you praised for that young lady over there whose name has now gone. You will run again, and when you run, I want you to say one word loud that you ain't going to understand. All of us will praise and go crazy for her because the Lord said to protect your destiny, he's got a husband waiting on you. Sure does. And what's crazy is she want one. A lot of people that are young, they want to sow their wild oats.
But when God chooses your spouse, it's another story. That's going to protect her from the mistakes that would befall her. Hallelujah. You may be seated. As we go forward, if the Lord should choose to speak some more, he shall. Well, put that camera on me so we can talk about it. Can y'all see me? Somebody's going to be extremely blessed. You were contemplating coming to service. I don't know if you made it. That's between you and God. If you didn't make it and you got nerve to be driving your car and you're 7.2 miles from here, turn that car around and get to church. When I call this name, if anyone knows this name or knows a person with this name, you will go crazy real quick for this person because your last name is Smiley. Your last name on the camera. Can y'all see people typing back there? Keep an eye on your screen. I'm going to work. And some of y'all be judging me, but you don't even know the person's name sitting next to you. That's how rude you are. You don't care. I mean, your pro prophecy could be sitting right next to you in the form of a banker, president, employee, and you missing it. Hey, what's your first name? Yeah, yeah, I think that's you I'm looking for. Can I say something to you without you getting offended? Talk to me, don't shake your head. I got to teach my young people how to talk. Can I talk to you? I like that. God is going to put angels around you to protect you from the gang life. One of your friends is dangerous. A gun carrying gang banger dangerous. And the Lord wants to protect you. I don't know what this means because God says, I put a gift in him to dance. We will see him in some way, shape, or form, miming, dancing, choreographing. And that's going to pull him away from the danger that the enemy thought he could kill him. You were supposed to, next week, get shot three times in your friend's car. He don't even have a legal drive license. But God says warning comes. Woo. That one took a lot out of me. Because I've got children that should be dead. Based on their zip codes, their lifestyles. They shouldn't be alive. But thank God for the blood. Wish I had some help here. I said, thank God for the blood. It reaches. Hallelujah. To the highest mountain. Then it flows into the hood. To the projects. To the lowest valley. It gives us strength. 
from day to day for those who know it it will never you finish it never never what lose be seated I'm not stopping anybody. I'll shorten my lesson. It's very unusual that people run after God. They want God to run after them. But tonight, you have run towards God. And God says 90 days have become 30. For you that understand the language, you know that's a good place to praise him. For you that don't just ask them when they finish praising him, what does that mean? I told... Get your Bibles quickly and make me feel like I'm preaching. I told our presiding bishop, he said, did you get any rest? I said, no, sir. I said, because I came across a new sermon. I told the fine adjutant that's been tending to me. I said, when the Lord speaks a new sermon to me, there's no sleep. So y'all ain't going to sleep on this sermon because I couldn't get no sleep. But I want to give a synopsis for five of you who will push me and while you push the prophet, whatever you desire, God will speed up his process because I need your prayers and your support. That God says the first group of people I'm about to give a miracle to within 30 days are them that the devil was driving crazy. And because you did not have a nervous breakdown and had the nerve to still encourage other people while you yourself are inwardly discouraged. I think, and I like walking when the church is big. I think that there's a group of people who will talk to me that found out money don't solve everything. It never said that. It said it answereth, not solveth. I think we found out that you can still be happy in one area and sad in another. If you talk, I'll preach. I think that there's a group of people that found out you can be married and still alone. Yep, wasn't nobody going to say amen on that one, but. You can be around a group of people and still be by yourself. You could be looking fly and living low. What I'm asking God to do tonight for the first group is to give you something that makes up for all the hell you've been through. That will change your complaint into a testimony. Young. Because believe it or not, someone else's deliverance is based upon how you come out of what you're in right now. Now, Bishop, you can rebuke me because that's your place to do. And I will take it without any complaints. But I don't have a lot of preaching friends because they drive me crazy. 
preachers love helping others, but the only way their sermons are so powerful is sometimes their sermons from a life that's so pitiful. Look how quiet it got now. I thought y'all seven were going to talk to me. I'm tired of using my pity for your plenty. I wish I could preach, but I can't get no help upstairs. I need God to make me a reflection. That when I tell you you're going to get it, it's because he's done it for me. I got one help right there, right there, two over there. I am tired of having to be your example. I want to be your in-sample. I don't, no longer do I want to be able to tell you he'll heal you from cancer because I had cancer. Or that you can come out of the hood because I'm living in the hood. What I want us to exercise in 2023 for 100 folk who scream is calling those things that be not. Help me preach. I stayed for you as though they are. And I'm telling God before you use me in 2023 to release things upon people, I need you to release it upon me. I said this is a year to be a little selfish. I don't want to throw it in my enemy's face. I want to be proof of what God can do. For 10 years out of 38 years of preaching, I was a broke church of God in Christ evangelist. Y'all didn't have prophets. Y'all didn't have apostles except the chief apostle who ran the church. We were elders, ministers, and evangelists. So they called me Evangelist Hall because I was, y'all quite evangelizing. But while I was evangelizing, the gift of prophecy was in me. God would use me in our churches to release it. But I couldn't call myself back then a prophet. Oh. See, people don't know the story. Because some folk want what you have to offer, but they don't want you. I'm talking to talkers. And I'm tired of folk putting folk in my life who want what's in my hand, but not what's in my heart. Preach the gospel. And the Lord would... And the Lord would use me in very crazy ways where my enemy said he's demon possessed. And those who liked me says he got a strong gift. But he's not a prophet. After year 10 of being used to that level, still not having a place to live. Driving this beat up Chrysler. I told God very strategically, whatever you, I, I feel like preaching, whatever you got to take me through to get me to, let's get to it. I'm testifying and some of you are missing the opportunity to grab a hold. Because you're not hearing my story, you're hearing my story that sounds like your story. I told the Lord, I said, now listen, my requests are simple. I've prophesied to people, they're going to have millions, they come to me, high five me. Bro, you're a true prophet, I got my million and won't even leave me a tip. And I told the Lord for those who have my ways right now, hear me, I want to preach. Thank you, don't pay no bills. If you're a pastor, 
You pray for one of your members, they get miraculously, y'all ain't going to heal from cancer where they had to pay $100,000 a month for chemo and they get healed in less than a year. A thank you should, should, should be expected, but a check should be a part of that thank you. Because it says what the doctors couldn't do, God did through a vessel. And if I can pay a professional, I can have gratitude towards a preacher. But the church is the last to get paid. But the first to get slain. They are the last to get paid, but the first to get slain. Then y'all expect us to sit back, watch God do it for everybody who's sinning, lying, cheating, and be okay. Well, please look at somebody. I'll preach you out and tell them it's okay not to be okay tonight. It's okay not to be okay. I wasn't okay. Am I boring y'all with my story? But I, I, I wasn't okay. So I said, Lord, don't prophesy no more miracle houses out of my mouth till I get one. Don't prophesy no more money out my mouth till I get some. Look how quiet y'all are. Stop making me regret you after others get what's coming out of my mouth. And I go home the same way I came. Went to Orlando, Florida. After this, just give me 25 minutes. I went to Orlando, Florida to preach at a church that did not exist. My aunt and I drove Jeannie Hall from all the way in New Jersey to Orlando going to Titusville on an Im invitation that was ghost. Got there in her black Cadillac with burgundy seats. Y'all ain't talking to me. They said that church has never been here. We're stranded. We drive to Orlando. We go to the music store because back then I could play a little bit. I wanted to play my frustrations out because now I'm embarrassed because everybody back home in New York think I'm on one of my biggest meetings that don't exist. I go into the discount music store on LB McLeod. It's still there right now. I start playing the keys. I go to play the drums. I hear a sound in the back of the, I'm, boy, I'm about to run. I am. I hear a sound. I hear, see, some folk want to preach, but they don't tell their story. So you telling David's story, but he gone. What's your story? I know David killed Goliath, but what have you killed? I went in the back. There was a church with eight people waiting on the guest preacher. Eight people. I said, who are y'all waiting on? We waiting on the preacher. I said, okay. Then the lady said, do you preach? I wanted to say no because I was already angry. No, y'all let, and there's only eight people and three of them are children. See, Bishop been there. See, the reason that they shouldn't be jealous of where you sit now is where you sat then. They had a Casio piano, an amp, and a mic that you plug in. That's a long time, 30 years. And the Lord said, preach to them like it's packed. And me and my musician, Darren Ross, we started preaching. My aunt was there. She traveled with me, cooked, and would pray from Johnny Washington. She said, preach the gospel. I wanted to tell her, Aunt Jeannie, sit down somewhere because you know we stranded. I preached. A little girl named Christy, still living, came over to me. She was like two or three. She said, hello, mister. I said, hello, little girl. God said, run. I said, mm-mm. You three years old, you run. See, some of y'all act like you ain't never been there. And the Holy Ghost said to me, run. 
So I ran around the back of the warehouse, empty, no people. Came back around, run again. Run one more time. My aunt knew I was upset. She said, run. Because she holy. Oh, no, I respect my husband. So I ran. Came back. We closed the service. My aunt said, baby, there's a woman that's going home to prepare dinner for us. I told her we would come eat. I said, aunt, you know what everybody's for? I trust her. So we drive to this beautiful neighborhood, and we go into the house. House is posh, and we plush, and, and we eat the food. And I'm enjoying it. I ain't in no rush because we're going back to a motel. I'm like, Jesus, this feel good. Eating. And right after we finish eating, the lady who's going to be with the Lord now, but her daughter is Christy. Her name is Mary. Uh, Mary, I can't remember her last name right now, but her name is Mary. Mary said to my aunt, well, here goes the keys and we're going home. So I looked at her, I said, what you mean y'all going home? She said, we're heading home. I said, well, who live here? She said, y'all do. I said, what? She said, I own two houses. I just bought this. And the Lord told me, if you ran when my daughter told you to run. See, some of you. I lived in that property for nine years. All the furniture stayed brand new. Pool table in the middle. Fireplace. Backyard. I thought she was kidding. The next year I had to start paying $9.85, $9.85 per month for rent. Who cares? I got that miracle because God says, you didn't even see it. I made you think you were going somewhere. But I was sending you to a new level in me. And I want to say this for screamers. God said, tell all of you, get ready to run towards whatever it is because you are one different behavior. Uh-oh, somebody done really ran. They weren't even playing. Bishop, I've lived in only three houses in Orlando. One I rented, couldn't pay for. After this, I'm going to get back to the sermon and cut and paste. I had my house. Never went back up north. That was something. Never went back. People said, where is Evangelist Hall? He living in Orlando by mistake. I wake up the next day, I got a used car in the driveway. The next year, I cannot pay $9.85 a month. I'm an evangelist with no dates. No appointments. No one's calling. I got that big old cell phone. Y'all don't remember? The one with the Roman charges. I created my own office. You have reached the office of Dr. Todd Hall. Sorry, I'm not available at this time to take your message. Oh, look at somebody tell me, you got to fake it till you make it. Just going to tell I'm being evicted in two months. It's not Mary's fault. Barna is her last name. It's no one's fault. I can't pay. I told God, respectfully, stop putting me in positions that when I preach to others, they are put in better positions than me. I didn't bring it up again, but he must have remembered. My phone rang. God bless you. Is this Dr. Todd Hall? And now y'all laugh at me, but I'm telling the truth. I said, who may I ask is calling? I'm playing my own secretary. All right. See, some of y'all can't get blessed because we up here capping. All this cap right here. They don't even know what cap means. They like, what's that? Because we hiding our stories, you can't live through yours. Yes, sir. 
This is Free Gospel Deliverance Church, Apostle Ralphie Green in Coral Hills, Maryland. We would like to uh, contract your services for New Year's Eve. I know that it's late because it's in about two weeks and we know your calendar is booked. Can you tell us whether Dr. Hall is able to do that? I said, hold on one minute. And you got to count to 30. You can't look hungry. Oh, I wish. I then you change your voice. Praise the Lord. God bless you. How are you? They said, Prophet Hall. Yes. We're sorry for disturbing you, calling you so late. But we want to know, can you come to our ministry? Never heard of them and do a revival on New Year's Eve. We're gonna pay you $1,000, give you two round trip tickets and a limousine. That's how I make people take care of me now is they created it, right? Because when I was just Kojic struggling, it was a little half inch pan that they gave and said this pan is for the church and this pan is for the preacher. Please put something in the pan for the preacher. Then they put it in a yellow manila envelope that looked like a dime bag of weed and then they give it to a little child. Then they tell the child to come to you and present it and the child said, we cannot pay you for your services. This is how this worked. See, if y'all give me seven minutes and push me, we're going to free everybody in this church because they're looking at us now, but they don't know what they're going through. We have already been there. I took a guy named Chris Peace. We, uh, we didn't even have no traveling musicians, but because they brought up two round trip tickets, two rooms and the limo, I found me a musician for that trip. He said, how are we going to get there? I said, man, round trip ticket. He said, flying? I said, yeah. Where we stand? I said, they're putting us at the court, Courtyard Marriott out in Landover. This is back in 92. I said, and I'm going to have a suite, and you're going to have a junior suite because I'm the preacher. I'm going to have a suite. You... <laughs> I have the junior suite. They left a credit card. Y'all can eat three meals. Ralph Green took care of us, Apostle Ralph Green. The limousine took us everywhere. So when we got there, I said, how long do we have the limo? They said, all day. So I made the limousine take me everywhere. I said, drive me down here. I had friends in Maryland that lived in the hood. I said, let's go to Cherry Hill. When I rolled the window down, they was like, oh, you made it? In my head, I said, for a day at least. But I was, oh, y'all. Now, I'm going to go back and say this. I got four minutes for this story but I need y'all to scream if you catch it God will never put you in something or something in your face if he's not testing you oh y'all he now 30 y'all gotta scream on this you've been living with appetizers for the past 10 years and now God's about to serve you your entree the entree is so big you're gonna have to take some of it home See, when folk know your story, they don't judge you anymore. They start respecting you because you let out a part that you've been hiding all the time. You, they're already mad at me because I'm preaching for the presiding bishop. They think every door in the culture church is going to open for me. Uh, make that happen. Okay. <laughs> now that I'm talking to the presider, Good churches only, because I'm old. Can you, can you hook a man up? Get the camera. Now that you said yes, I was going to say this anyway. Somebody scream on this, especially members. Who in the world could get upset that God postured you to be the PB and think that you would get uh, high-minded or act crazy when to get there, you lost a mama, you lost a daddy. Who in the world can rejoice on a promotion when both things balanced itself out? 
when they recognize the struggle, they should leave you alone because the seat you sit in can't bring mama and daddy back. If it could, what would you do with the seat? Give it back. You give it back. We got a few minutes. Now, when I say this, 100, you jump, spin around, do the hokey pokey, but go crazy. Right now, you don't have our stuff, but you got your life. And the first thing you ought to thank God for is he woke me up this morning. Y'all better talk. Started you. I don't care. Food on your table. It might be a sandwich, but it's food on your table. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Clothes on your back may not be designer clothes yet. Activities of your limbs. I got to get out here. Blood flowing warm in your veins. Then had the nerve to save you. Sanctify you. Let me tell my story. They brought me to the church that night, New Year's Eve. They picked me up at nine. Driving, I don't know what to expect. Never heard of him, he never heard of me. I get there, walk into a monstrosity of a church, 4203 Marlboro Pike. Right now, that building is owned by J.J. Uh, 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 Harrison or James Fortune, whoever's pastoring. I walked in, there was 3,000 people. I ain't never seen 3,000 people. I just left eight last year. Oh, y'all didn't catch that. And he told me, preach hard to them because he was qualifying how I treated small. Oh, yeah. Now I'm going to preach hard. 3,000 people. Bishop Ralphie Green is old apostolic church. I'm Kojic. Yeah, pray the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. Who are you? I said, um... Dr. Todd Hall, he says, uh, who called you? I said, your office. He said, no, we were calling. You can look this up on Facebook. The White Todd Hall from the Apostolic Worldwide Fellowship of Churches. He said, what you say your name is? I said, Todd Hall, so is his. He said, well, you here now. Oh, y'all missed it. Well, you here now. Made a few phone calls to my enemies that put out rumors that were partially true. He then vetted me before he let me preach, and I answered yes, even to the true things. He said, I can use a man who will tell the truth. I thought what I confessed to was going to tell him, send him on home. See, y'all ain't ready for this. What I just said for 200 Screamers is your mistakes ain't going to stop this. This that he's about to do, I'm prophesying, is not for a reason. It's because of a season. Y'all don't, and that season will last as long as you give him a reason. I had no reason to be preaching to 3,000 people in 1992. Preached that night. He stood up. When he stood up, they stood up. So I know what kind of church I was in. If he sat down, they just got quiet. He stood up like y'all are doing. Came to my ear while I was preaching. I was, the Bible. You got somewhere to go? The Bible. Announce you're going to be here tomorrow. Now, y'all ain't going to catch it because you ain't going to scream. I wasn't thinking about the revival. I was like, there go two months rent. Yes, See, y'all are missing it. I'm trying to tell you, he's about to let you pay in advance and some of you are not walking with me. Bishop, at the end of this, you will have five me. I promise you will want to. That meeting went 31 days. 
No, everybody who was there is still living. You can call any bishop in Maryland because they all came through there. And I mean every one of them, even white. Mayor Marion Berry gave his life to the Lord in my meeting. See, you can call names when you ain't lying. It was a lot of people falling out. We baptized 352 in 30 days. I did it his way in the name of Jesus. And all my mind could do because I was broke will say we had $31,000. Man, I got enough to almost pay rent for the year. For two, three years almost. After the revival was over, it was in January, it was freezing cold. They wrote me my check. I zoomed to the bank called First Union, which later became Wachovia, which later became Wells Fargo. See, y'all don't care. Y'all gonna need about three banks. Touch somebody and tell them, I'm gonna need a few financial institutions. I stayed with that one bank 32 years. Jackie, I'll talk to you because I believe that you believe me, I'm hoping. If not, we'll make phone calls after church. I went, it is 301-420-9300 or 420-9301. And I went, and I signed the back like we all do, because when you're broke, you go straight to the bank. We ain't going home. I wasn't getting on the plane. I'm an evangelist. Y'all laughing? Okay. Straight to the bank. They asked me, how do you want it? Y'all know what I said? Cash. See, broke know what I'm talking about, but how would you like me to give it to you? Any way you can. They said, and I'm making this short, it's going to take two hours. I said, no, I got a plane to catch. Two hours. I said, Jesus, y'all don't have $31,000 in the bank? They said, we know Bishop Ralphie Green. We're going to call him and verify, but it's going to take two hours. I called him. Phone number ain't the same no more. It was 301-627-1777, so I called him. And I said, he prayed the Lord. I said, Bishop, I heard you down at the bank. I said, yes, sir, a workman is worthy of his hire. I said, I don't believe your check bounced, but they won't cash it. He said, now, listen, I'm headed down there. I want you to leave it. Uh, when I get there, I'll solve it. He gets there after I go get a sandwich. He says, I'm going to pay, pay for your new flight, but let me... Let me introduce you to a season called, listen, I'm about to hit it, New Broke. I said, New Broke? He said, yeah, you was broke when you got here, and you're going to be New Broke when you leave. I said, what is this man, season man, talking about? He gets there, and he said, uh, where you live? 7007 High Wassey Oak Drive. I don't live there no more. That was the house Mary got me. He said, uh... Are you looking for another house? I was like, yeah, I did. I went to a rent, I mean, a buy, buy by the owner, owner for sale. I said, and, you know, I don't have that money, but I believe God. He said, how much was it? And I gave him the amount. He said, uh, did you look at the amount of your check? I said, mm -mm, I signed it. <laughs> and he laughed. He, oh, he said, you didn't look at the amount? I said, mm-mm. I said, I know it's supposed to be at least 31 grand. He said, oh, you can count. I said, yeah, I used to be a pharmaceutical salesman. <laughs> See, you can't get blessed if you, can, if you hide what you used to be. You don't know what capping means, do you? So when I said a lot of folk are capping, it means they're lying. That's the, that's the millennial term for lying. So if they ever look at you and say, stop capping, they're telling you that you're lying. So I just put y'all up on game, okay? So I'm sure y'all have heard that word before. He said, um, tell them, show you the amount of the check. I said, can I have the check back? They said, yeah. Then he walked through the door. Flipped it over. I almost fainted. 
I'm serious. I got light. I said, what is this? The first thing I heard was God say, who you been talking to? <laughs> About you don't want to talk to others unless I bless you. He said, you were willing to settle for 31 grand. When I was about to pay your house off. That man got on the flight, took me to Orlando, bought the house that I looked at cash. And I had no more money. I was new broke. But never to be homeless or pay rent another day. And some of y'all need to stop relying on money and posture for the miracle. Because the miracle is coming in a way you've never seen it before. Now, I got to cut and paste this. So y'all will watch the screen on Exodus 2 and you will see the scriptures. I'm going to start yelling because y'all about to get paid. I'm going to stay over here. I'll be over there in a minute. Why would God make me tell my story if he's not about to duplicate it tonight? Let me tell you how for screamers. He says, shall men give unto your bosom? Which means God is about to put your name on a rich person's heart. And when they find you, they're going to ask you, what is it? Did we not see that on Sunday? Now they bakuti ni so. You're not going to believe it because you ain't screaming. But whatever you need, it ain't out of the building. It's in the building. And God wants to do exceeding. Ten minutes, senior, and you got it abundantly. I feel his glory. Above all that we could ask or think. You ain't got to stand, mother, according to the power. Not that works in him. You. The season is based upon what comes out of you. I'm waiting on God. No, you are not. He's waiting on you. I don't ask God for nothing. Then keep living with nothing because he said you have not. Tell me, I don't ask. You better start asking tonight. When you ask for a husband, tell God how much money you need him to make. Make sure he saved. Holy Ghost feel. Does not practice violence. Make sure she could cook. Make sure she know how to change bed linen. Make sure. Just, just make sure. Be specific this year. Didn't I tell you last night that the new you should cost somebody some money? Because you didn't treat the broke me right. So, so if you ain't changed, you ain't going to treat the new me right. You just want what's in my hand. You don't care what's in my heart. Last time I'm about to fly my kite now, Vicky. Look at that scripture. Bishop, high five me. No, you can't do that. You the presider. You high five me. I'm so used to him being in another position. Can't do that. There went a man of the house of Levi, took a wife, a daughter of Levi. Every verse, I'm going to pause. I'm going to read five of them. Then we're going to yell. But ten of you scream as if you've been blessed after I give you this. The first one, go back and stay there, simply says for screamers, find someone that you agree with. You miss it. Don't choose outside of your faith. Y'all real quiet. If you believe in tongue speaking, find somebody that enjoys you speaking in tongue. It said a man of the house of Levi took a daughter from the same tribe. Make sure you're in the right tribe. 
that when you scream, they scream too. If you run, they cheer you on. If you get a prophecy, they say, get it, girl. Don't be among jealous individuals that hate that right now God's targeting you. Look at some of the bougie ones who I just preached, but I'm not moving. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Come here. Verse 2, five verses. I'm flying. The woman conceived, bare a son. When she saw him that he was a goodly child, not godly, she hid him three months. Stay there. Want to say this now and see if some of you start jumping as if a new car in the chauffeur's outside waiting to drive Miss Daisy home. Once you get among the right people or the right group, you will start producing. The reason why God has not blessed some of you is he won't let your fake friends enjoy it. So God said, I've been holding it for a long time because you choose the wrong company. The treasure is for your tribe. Uh oh, y'all. I want to preach. The treasure is for your tribe. Then they produce, gave birth to a child, goodly child, which means it's all good. Tell three people it's all good. Mean it when you tell them it's all good. She hid it three months. Here I go, prophetically preaching. Then I'm going to go to my closing verses. Y'all have stood up and pushed me. I feel so good. But catch this and scream to the top of your voice. God says that in 2023, he was going to do some great things. I said through the word of God that God said he would do it in the first trimester, which is the first three months. The Lord said, tell y'all I'm going to do it, but hide it. Y'all ain't talking. I'm going to do it. Don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. See if they'll treat you right while they don't know what you have. The God said, I will bless you if you keep your mouth shut. The only time your mouth is to open is to give glory to God. And while folk are laughing, be paying all your student loans off, all your credit card. Let them laugh. I'm almost there. I'm almost there. She had to hide it. Why did she have to hide it? Because what she gave birth to, the enemy had it out to kill it. There are people that never ever attacked you until you produced. As long as you was broke, high five, hey, sis, so and so, as soon as you put on new dress, some red bottom, uh oh, they changed up because your season changed. They were only for your raggedy Ann and Ann. They were only for, I wish I had it, I'm coming. They were only for your Sanford and Son, but not for your Jeffersons, you follow? They wanted you to keep selling trash and not move up to the east side where you finally got a piece of the pie. You wanted me to stay happy selling garbage. You wanted me to be single and Miss Elizabeth and raise the dummy Lamont. You didn't want me to find Flo and have a child and a son in wedlock who married a white. Y'all don't want me to. Pre you didn't want me to own a cleaning business and a franchise. You didn't want. Forget want. I need screamers. You didn't expect it either. And God says, tell some of you after March, open up your basket. Y'all but for the first three months, praise him every day. Don't discuss your money. Don't discuss your relationships. I'll let that out in due time. Verse 3, 4, and 5, we're closing. When she could no longer hide it.
God is expanding me so much. I can't hide it. I didn't tell nobody what I have. It just spoke for itself. When you're pregnant for the first few weeks, can nobody tell? But as you keep feeding what you're carrying, expansion happens on its own. Then you don't have to tell people you're pregnant. They ask you, you pregnant? Oh, y'all real see you're not talking. And I'm going to change the word pregnant to a better word that's prophetic. I'm going to give you 50 seconds to praise him because God says beginning tomorrow it will start. God says none of you are pregnant. You're expecting. And by the end of the month you'll be showing. Y'all ain't talking. You're not going to have to announce anything. She could no longer hide him. She took for him an ark of bulrushes, dubbed it with slime. I need you to run across this pulpit for $5 million. You need to run quick right across here. Dubbed it with slime. Dubbed it with slime and pitch and then put the child in it, laid it in the flags. I got two verses after this bishop by the river's brinks. I want to say this also for those who don't study, but you enjoy folk who do study so that you can rightly apply it to your life. When I do this, any preacher that runs and any person who has a business who screams will be blessed. What she did was she took what she couldn't hide hide. And she prepared a basket for it. She put it in a basket to let it grow only a certain amount of time until it could outgrow what it was put in. She put it in a place of restriction. A straight, a a place of limitation. Then she dubbed this, uh, 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 they call it an ark, this bulrush with slime and pitch. Let me tell you what folk normally don't say about slime and pitch. Then I'll see who hit the pitch and don't care about the slime. And I'm going to see if you yell loud. She had to put this baby in in an ark, small little basket, close it up, fill all the holes so that the water didn't seep in and drown what she had, put it in the river where there was gators and crocodiles. The way this child could not be devoured by gators and crocodiles is they hated the smell of slime and pitch. And the Lord said, I used your mess to keep certain people away from you. You see it as slime, I see it as pitch. If some folk that hate you really knew what you were going to become, they'd have been faking the whole way through. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Slime. Yes, sir. Pitch. You watched the Ten Commandments growing up? Charleston Heston. You? You? Don't cap. Come on. When you, when you watched it, We believed it because we didn't know the Bible. We saw the waters of the Red Sea go back and we as Christian children was like, look at the waters and we enjoyed the voice of God. Moses. Man, I I was flipping out. Charleston Heston's hair turned white. He came down with sandals. But when he was born, they said there was a Hebrew cloth in the movie in the basket. And that when they opened the basket, they knew it was a Hebrew child because of the cloth in the basket. Now, I'm going to say this for my group because I'm going to yell in three minutes, but y'all catch this. In the text, there is no cloth in the basket. 
What gives him identity? Go to the next verse. I'll see who scream. The next verse says, and his sister stood afar off to wit what would be done to him. There are folk that are only in your life to see how you're going to come out of this. Now, verse 5. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. They trying to see. If the gator's going to eat you, the crocodile's going to eat you, whether there's going to be a hole in the basket, whether you're going to drown, they're expecting something bad to happen. Daughter Pharaoh came down to watch herself at the river. Her maidens walked alone. Now Pharaoh is the one, help me preach, that has the order that if you see any of the Hebrew men, kill them. So now the assassin is on the premises in the same pool of water that Moses is in. Oh, y'all don't like what I'm preaching. Now what really wants to kill you is close to you. See, Bishop got it, but y'all didn't. I said what really wanted to kill you is close to you. Walked along the riverside, and then it said, and when she saw the ark among the flags, we're talking about Pharaoh's daughter, she sent her handmaid and said, go fetch it, which means now God has given you over to an enemy. Here. If I say this, you don't scream, you miss it. An enemy that can't touch you. This particular enemy is about to fund you. Y'all ain't talking. Oh, y'all don't want, because the wealth of the wicked, I want to preach it, but y'all sitting right there. What came to kill you is going to fund you. There is no cloth. About to preach, so be ready. There is no cloth. Well, how is this child identified? Identified. When the assailant let her praise and cry, when the assailant, which I had talks up here, opened up the basket, they saw what they were ordered to kill. I'll say it again. I'm easing into my key, whatever it be. When the assailant opened up the basket, they saw what they were raised to kill. There is no cloth. But there is a way to identify who you are. Let me also throw this out there because you can tell I'm looking for a key for you that no church but let me say this before I give it over to Dr. Dorinda and she could yell, but 10 of y'all scream on this. God's about to brand you. God does not actually care about your ideas. Your ideas mean nothing if he don't brand who had the idea. All right, I'll go further because they didn't jump. I ain't going over there. God's about to put in you what your enemies need to pay for. People are going to buy into you. You that are acting all deep, waiting on it, and the Lord, we coming. But hooping ain't going to pay your bills. But what may, go back, we ain't going out of this verse. We're going to stay right in this verse and I'm about to yell. How was the child? Let me hear an A flat. Yeah, that's too high tonight. How was the child identified? The Bible says that when she opened up the basket, there was no cloth. The child had no material. 
for three folk who will scream to help me preach, the child is a basket case. The child is not supposed to make it out of what it's in. Trouble, trouble is on every side. Nobody, that's the A flat, is trying to help you get where you have to go. Will y'all get somebody's hand and help me preach and look at them like God's about to bring them out of the worst thing in and tell them the Lord is about to make a way out of no way. Uh, mm, Lord, I said, uh, tell somebody else the Lord. Y'all wanted it, but you didn't want it. It's about to make a way out of no way. Get somebody else's hand that's from your same tribe. Somebody that don't mind you talking to them and tell them how are you coming out of what you're in? Tell them it's as easy as this. Have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about your trouble. He'll hear your faithful cry. He'll answer by and by. Get a little prayer wheel turning. And all that fire burning. Just another talk with Jesus. We'll surely make it right. Get somebody else hand. That's in your tribe and tell them if you know God is bringing you out, then the words of this song ought to bring a praise out of your mouth. And the words are some folk would rather have houses and land. To silver and gold, these things they treasure and they forgot about their souls. But throw your head back and say, I have decided to make Jesus my choice because the road has been rough and the going has been tough and the hills have been harder hard to climb but I started out but I started out but I started out a long time ago there is no doubt in my mind that I have decided grab somebody and say neighbor with the stuff I heard that you were going through you should have lost your mind Threw in the towel and left the church. But something on the inside that's working on the outside kept on talking to you. And it said two words. Hold on. I want you to tell somebody in your tribe. Hold on. Just a little while longer. These heavy burdens, they will soon pass over. Run the race and keep the faith in God's own time. Somebody else had it say, oh neighbor. Come on.
gonna be nice to each other and say, oh neighbor, when the enemy opened up that basket, little Moses should have been killed. But God turned the murder into a grand opening. And the next time the devil steps to you and tries to kill you, he's gonna have to pay you for all the hell he took you through. Now prepare us a table before me in the presence of I feel a Noel Jones. Did I tell you? I serve your neighbor. And he anointed your hand with oil and your cup run it over. Surely, surely. What's going to follow you? What's going to follow you? Preach it to your neighbor and tell him from this day forward no witchcraft, no debt, no disease, no haters, just goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my Do the fancy stuff while you're playing. They opened the basket, Bishop. Thank you for being courteous. No cough. What got him to live where he should have died was how he cried. His mouth changed. The assignment. It said, because when he cried, she had compassion. She was supposed to kill him, but your mouth is controlling someone's behavior. When you go to get the house and know you got bad credit, praise God before they talk to you. And the person that sees your bad credit is going to say, but I like you. I think I see a way we can get around this. It's your mouth the baby carazzo the baby wept and when she saw the child crying I'm done she said I got to show compassion but the law says kill him God gave Moses look at me over to the enemy Boy, if they scream, I'll get it. And made the enemy name him, feed him, clothe him, house him. Y'all ain't gonna scream in this. And hire his mama. Y'all is a. Oh, that. And educate. Yes, and educated him. Free. Free from a mouth as a baby opening. Two things left, but you got to scream loud. A baby's mouth took care of him till he was a grown man. Y'all understand? Some of you wait till you're too old to catch on. You got to catch on early. I cried and I cried. I cried all night long. I, I cried and I cried until I found the Lord. Just look at somebody and tell them my soul couldn't rest contented. No, put some sauce on it and say, oh, neighbor, 
My soul couldn't rest contented until I And this is how we close it. This is Matula Kisi Bokondai. This is how we close it. Look at me, especially the millennials. He's a basket case. He's then raised where he should die. Then he's positioned to rule his haters. Here's the part where I want to close because you ain't happy. When his mouth opened with no cloth, from the sound he made, she says he's a Hebrew child. The church used to be identified by the sound we made. If people walk by your church and say, hey, 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 they said that's a holiness church. Now they think we're Catholic. But I dare. Y'all not going to catch this. I dare some of you to catch this without being offended. The Lord said, tonight, just be a bunch of crybabies. Crybaby, when you do that, you got to start understanding that a certain sound changes the whole situation. Close with this as you begin the masikopada. As you begin to be careful whose hand you hold. Moses is crying. Bishop, if this makes sense, just act like you're touching my shoulder. I'm excited. He's crying because it's time to be fed. He's not crying because he's been discovered. He's crying because he's separated from food. When he cries... They then, back then, did not have Similac, Infamil, Pedialyte. They had breast milk. If you don't catch it, I'm out. Therefore, who found him couldn't feed him because she didn't have what it took. <laughs> now, if I say this and you scream, you got it. Where you were once not needed, you're going to need me now because you don't have what it takes to do what's necessary. Yes, Miriam, his sister, let's close, runs over to Pharaoh's daughter and she doesn't tell her who she is. She says, you do know that the Hebrew women then she tells Miriam without knowing who she is. Because if you want all of this to happen, stop telling folk who you are. Get there first and let it speak for you. Got over there. And she said, I know a lady who's full of breast milk. She said, go get her. Bring her to me. What she didn't know for screaming women, but that she went to bring the baby mama. And all she had to tell her mother was, keep who you are quiet. If I say this and you don't scream, you'll never be rich because you're about to get paid for what you would have done for free. Yo. You would have taken care of Moses for free. Parents don't get paid to take care of children. She raised him. Bishop, I want to give you something that you may know, but I want to give it to you free along with my brothers and sisters because I hate having the knowledge and not ever preaching it. But I want to give this to somebody. Gift this. And if you catch it, somebody up here run for me. She knew that it was a Hebrew child because of how his mouth and how he cried. The Egyptians were very educated. They studied everything. So she looked at the child and said, Egyptians don't cry like this. This sound is too loud and it's strong. This is a Hebrew, but I'm going to raise it 
as an Egyptian. Hold on. When God calls Moses to go preach or to be a deliverer, this is only for multimillionaires. Moses tells God, you got the wrong one because I'm slow of speech. I stammer. Get out of here. Let me tell 50 of you this. Don't worry about how you talk because you're not going to need to be interviewed. I, I just want to help you. You're about to be the boss. Bosses don't get interviewed. I, 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 he was, he said, I can't do it. God then tells him, here's the freebie. And y'all getting it because of our presiding prelate. He says, I am not eloquent of speech or whatever. But he spoke four of the five languages. Perfectly well, but stammered. God says, I'll send help. And he sent Aaron. I said, Aaron, I'll talk for you. History records, and this is where we close and get ready, and you better be ready. History records that the reason why he stammered is he was speaking Egyptian with a Hebrew tongue. And when you're doing something you ain't raised to do, there's always an impediment. Now, if you jump on this, we can stand, but you got to go crazy. God says some of you owe him praise because what could have killed you? He impeded that thing. You thought you should have been this. You thought you should have been that. And God stepped right in and said, this is not what you were born to do. Look it up during your study time. The Hebrew tongue is flat and wide. The Egyptian tongue is pointed because of the way they roll. Spanish people and English speaking people have different shaped tongues. So when you speak Spanish and they do that, we do it and you can tell we learn Spanish, but we're not Spanish. The Lord said, all of you that will praise him for just 10 seconds real loud with your mouth like you're crying out to him. He says, by the end of January, I'm going to give you a grand opening. I'm just going to open it up. And when you see who's looking over you, don't be scared. It might be an enemy, but it's an enemy with a check. The song said, I cried and he delivered me. There's so much more we could say, but I thank Bishop for his heart of compassion tonight to let me reach out to you with more time than usual because when I leave here and he invites me back, I want you to have it. Touch your neighbor and say, and I shall. Yeah, sound bougie. Don't say I will. Say, and I shall. The church now has to empower the membership by preaching from a place of reality. Be religious, but be more righteous. Because these kids know more than we did at our age. So your sermon has to be ahead of your generation. <laughs> Some of you, he gonna bless you just to see Will you start living right because he gave it to you before you did? See, you missed it. I didn't live holy and he gave me everything. He gave me everything and I vowed to live holy because I needed him to give me something worth living for. And now my addictions are not stronger than my assignment. Simply because, talk to me, I have too much to lose. Look at your name and tell them we are going to have too much to lose. You're holding the hand of a debt-free child of God. I just told you I no longer give what I don't have. 
It's a good feeling to wake up, no bills, but feel like you're supposed to go to work because you're still phobic. I get up with bills paid in advance and act like they're going to catch up with me next week so I go to work. We got to get over this phobia and get to a place where the assignment becomes enjoyable. Where you wake up like every day is Christmas. That you don't wait on the 24th and the 25th. Last time I'm going to give orders as you're holding that tribe's hand. Don't speak too much for the next three months about what God is giving you. Hide it. See who still loves you for who you are. Test your next level of relationship. If they were not the right one, change your company and God will change your currency. He'll sit you at tables where no one's jealous of each other because we all have all things in common. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. When I drove in the bishop's truck, when I go in his office before he became presider, when I saw how large his church was locally and now I see he is the church globally, yeah. I did not go to my room any day or night and say, God, bless me like him. Reason why for two folk will scream, I don't know what he went through to get there. And I ain't trying to go through another thing. You can have it. Let me borrow it. I'll give it back. Once you can rejoice for who has it and mean it, you can sleep at night. No one in here, well, I can't say that, the Lord rebuked me. 82% of you will know what it is by the end of the certain semester to start being in advance paying your bills. You will be so far ahead that by the next three years, you'll be a year ahead of whatever the bills are. That's for those who went to school long enough to do the math. Bishop, I know you don't do it, but I had... I, you know, I paid life insurance, and last year, they upped the insurance policy. Insurance policy basically says, if I die, that my church is paid for, the land, my children get a certain amount of money, and the house that I live in will be paid off. And me and my crazy self, young, like, started adding up how much I have already paid and I'm living, that I can't get back, and what if I never die? Y'all have never thought like that? I have. I said, they're getting this much a year? They've been getting it 15 years? Boy, I could have used that money. What in the world is going on? Then the Lord told me yesterday, I was in my prayer moment. He said, Todd, I said, yea, Lord. I did not say that. He said, um, if you trust me, he said, and you preach the way I'm going to ask you to preach. I'm going to give you your insurance money while you live. I said, what you talking about, Willis? <laughs> Some of you may not believe it, but God says your life is insured as of three months from today. Regardless of what man promises you, they cannot match what God has for you. So the Lord told me, don't prepare to die, prepare to live. You're holding the hand of a person whose credit score is going up 60, 70, 80 points. You'd be surprised how many preachers got bad credit. Only the wise survive. I went to buy me a car last week because my car is old and it's paid for and I went to BMW to buy me a car. Y'all jealous? Oh, okay. I looked at the car, drove it, liked it. They couldn't sell me an electric car because I'm not ready for that. And the truck was nice. The Lord said, now pick out the best truck. Then the salesperson came over, and they weren't lying because they know me. I bought six cars from there. They said, 
this ain't going to be here for one more hour. Someone's on the phone right now inquiring about this vehicle. Said, you don't have to buy it, but put a deposit, then come back so we can tell them it's not available. And the Lord said, no, buy it. I said, buy it? Yeah. So I go through the procedure. I have to unfreeze my credit because I don't trust people, so I have to call. See, y'all ain't going to be rich. I had to unfreeze because once something get fixed, you got to protect it. So I went through the long route and they unfroze it and they said, how long would you like it to be this way? I said, for 72 hours. They said, okay, unfroze it, got approved, called my bank, was getting the car. And the Lord told me, and I'm gonna see who catch this one person jump because you're gonna be this rich. He said, now that you bought it, give it to this person. I said, what? He said, you should have known it wasn't for you because you don't like white. God is about to put someone like me on someone's heart with you in mind. And what they would have done for themselves, they're about to do for you. All right, I want your heads bowed and I want you to consider this. Except those that are older, they're going to get mad. I want everyone to give God a dollar for every year you have lived. Not every day, every year. Now you that are older and 120, we gonna spare y'all. Cause if you lived 120, you shouldn't have to pay for nothing on the planet. But you young people that are now upset that you're 12, 30, now you're gonna tell folk I'm not 30 yet, I'm 29. Because you want to save that dollar. Y'all ain't talking. Don't look at anybody's hand or checkbook to try to see their age. Young man, what's your name in the gray? Stand up. What's your name? Antoine what? And <laughs> Antoine Alexander. If I told you everything I'm doing, you will be doing. Would you believe me? Except chewing gum, but everything else that I am doing right now, you're going to be one of the baddest preachers in your generation. And you're going to pastor one of the quickest thriving millennial churches that people have ever seen. Be careful with your company. I got to call him great nephew. Great nephew, come here. Stand right there. You've been talking to God for the past few days off and on. Like, I like Prophet Hall. He be dancing, shouting, and you and him had your talk about me, and I'm honored. He let me hear a little bit of it. What I'm going to do is what I've never done except for about five people in the world because of your desire. I'm going to hold your hand 10 seconds. And my prophetic gift is going to transfer to you. Because you said, if I had that, Lord, I would use it for your glory. So you're about to have it. You won't have to bring prophets into the church. You got one. And I don't know what the Lord means, but the Lord said, tell him, uh, that I'm also going to help him become a genius in math. Something about math. Good God right now. Don't you let what you may hear people say about your family, father, ever move you. You will be the Moses of your house. You're the child in the basket. Boy, he said, yes, sir, he make me want to cry. Hold my hand. Most people, with the other hand, most people don't get to feel that. And, um. Hey. 
Jay, come stand behind me. Y'all get your offerings ready because we're going to raise a good one. Touch his shoulders. God says, the reason why he's doing this, God says, I can't let him get that far ahead of you. He says, you're touching yourself. And the reason why he needs you behind him, because God says, when I'm through, his refills is from you. That's why there's a different hunger concerning music. You're wrestling with a few things, but not from a place of regret. Father, Shia. All right, keep your hand out. Bishop, you can come take this hand now. And let it go where it's supposed to go. Hey, Kelly. Come stand behind Jay. Hey, Kelly, when I was young, I got attacked twice with the thing called Bell's palsy. You know about that? You had it? All right, hold his shoulders, because you're in the family forever. You ain't going nowhere. When Bishop says amen or hallelujah, when you all get loud, God says, anyone in here with sons, I'm going to save them before the springtime gets here. And y'all need to do it. Right. This is what was going to happen. Bishop, you will hug him five seconds. You can go back. He will turn around, hug him five seconds. You can go to your seat. You can turn around and hug him five seconds, and we can all give. Go ahead. Hug him five seconds. Oh, yeah, this the icing on the cake now. Nah. Bishop, you can come stand here. All I'll say to you is your prayers have just been answered. Watch. Everyone that is not going to lie to the Holy Ghost, and I'm going to ask the millennials, alphas, and Zs to come first. If you're giving the offering obediently in the amount of your age, come up, touch the altar, and let's do it. Just the millennials, Zs, and alphas. That generation. Good, God Almighty. Play something nice before I start crying. I don't like crying. You that are watching by streaming, do the same. I think a dozen.